Hello, welcome to IMHO. In my homosexual opinion, I'm Auntie Chan. I'm Darby. And I'm Alexis P. Bevels. The P today stands for piccolo. Can you imagine a cuter instrument for a cuter human being? Olivia Lux playing the piccolo in high school. Piccolo. She said. Oh, she yeah. played the piccolo? Yeah. She oh. said she played the piccolo in band. Well, that pickles me. Oh, that's Isn't an instrument? Cute? Yeah. Okay. It's is it tiny. like it's a wind, right? It's a wind? Is it a wind? Do you wind? Is it a wind? Is it green? I imagine it's like Peter Piper, like, oh, what is that story? What is that fairy tale where, where he, he brings the rats out? Titanic. Or he, he lures the children to their death? Titanic 2. That movie that lures the children to the death. Uh, uh, like, it. Um, it. Oh, it. That's yeah, such yeah, a yeah. It. It. I, th I think it's like a recorder, but you put it on its side. Right? Like a flute, but like magical. It's like a flute if it was gay. That yeah. explains why in Dragon Ball Z there's a character named Piccolo and he does surf. <gasps> oh. And he's green and he does get played too by the main oh. character. Oops. Yeah. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Don't we all get played by the main character? <laughs> well, you do. From Dragon Ball Z to Dragon the TV? No. Before we get into. A Smooth, very smooth. Before we get into that though, do we have any updates? Because we haven't filmed for a few days. Has anything happened? Any life-changing news? Because I think our UK video, we didn't actually start talking about Drag Race UK until minute like 14. So we really need to drag this out because that's what they're used to. Mm -hmm. Well, you have some news. Oh, this is very big news, truly just for me and Curtis, but I got my first ever bed. Like, like <laughs> new bed. I haven't been sleeping on the floor. You got a new mattress. Yeah, I got a new mattress. Uh -huh. It's Brooklyn bedding. It's the cooling mattress because when I lay down to sleep, mm. I turn into lava. I think it's because God's trying to get me used to hell early because it's like, <laughs> You're gonna end up there because the anal, but like you're not that bad. So I'm gonna let you get used to it slowly. I slept on a cloud last night. I didn't get hot okay. once. Curtis <gasps> woke up with no sweat on it. Curtis used to wake up dripping. Like truly, I was like, did you go for a run? But he was just running from, you know, me. It's beautiful and I don't want hundred percent sell it yet. I've only slept one night and we get a hundred mm -hmm. night free sleeping or whatever. Okay. So I might get to night ninety nine and have to return it. I'm oh, that's fun. Do you just do keep doing email addresses and keep returning? <laughs> yeah, keep getting more mattresses. <laughs> I always did hand-me-down mattresses because I didn't realize how much it, it mattered. But I woke up today, no backache. I thought oh. everyone, when you woke up, your back hurt. I thought that was a thing. Because the mattress I was sleeping on when I first moved to Chicago was the mattress that my grandmother, Winnie, died on. Oh. It was that's barely just bad Well, she was very thin and very tiny. So, like, when her bowels released, there was barely anything in it. Wait, which side? Which side? Did she die on? Yeah. Or did she sleep in the middle? The right side of history. <laughs> you know, no, I'm oh, just I thought you were asking, like, did you just flip the mattress? Like, just sleep on the side she didn't die on. That's, oh. that's easy. <laughs> oh, no, I have no idea. I'm going to have to ask her. Winnie, stop sucking Jesus. I need to talk to you, stupid <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Don't talk about Grandma. No, no, like let Winnie be. Let her <laughs> yeah. be. She Rest read the Bible me. all the way through like seventy-three times. Like she, it, there was, there was darkness inside Girl, her. Girl, you know something that. else. There's other books, Winnie. Nerd. Uh, you nerd. dead nerd. <laughs> Jen, how's the Olympics? The Olympics are great. Sleeping on a spring mattress, keeping Ooh. me awake at night, keeping me on edge. But I think they're gonna wrap up early. The training is gonna wrap up early, so. I'll probably be back next week. Mm -hmm. Is it wrapping up early because sure. you're just that good? You can't learn anything else? I snatched up some some medals and that's really what I'm here for. Okay. Yeah. Not Ooh, by yeah. any competition. I just stole them. <laughs> okay. Just I don't mop those medals. I don't want to call you out, but a few days ago on our Drag Race UK review, you said you were only there for a big ass. So I have to ask. <laughs> Do you have a big ass? It's big, sweetie. Alexis, will you check? Will you check? It's big, sweetie. It's I'm big. sitting on oh, two shit. seats right now. It's big. <laughs> it's We're gonna big have to, sweetie. When you come back, we'll have to get an. I'll have to get another apartment. We can't fit that ass in this room. <laughs> Your Speaking? ass is so big <laughs> <laughs> that I gotta get two apartments. <gasps> Ow. Yeah, well, I was, well, it's good that my, my ass is so flat. So really, it's like we both have one ass now. Thank you. Thank you for I'll getting share. me I'll half share. an ass. I thank you. Mm -hmm. 
I also watched uh, Bling Empire for a little bit. You told me to watch Bling Empire. Oh, yeah, yeah. How are you finding it? It's cute. Christine is iconic Ew. and beautiful, and Anna is also iconic and everything. I love that she was introduced hammering a wall down. Like, I right. like that. I like that. I binged a show. It's only six episodes, and it's HBO Japan, but it's not in Japanese. It's mostly English and a little Dutch. It is called The Head, and it's a six episode series about a group of like researchers in Antarctica. Giving each other mm -hmm. head. Oh, giving head to penguins? In the winter, it's like 170 days of night. So like the team that stays there overnight or over the winter, when the summer team comes back, everyone's dead except for one person and they have to figure out what happened. Wait, mm. is it a, it's a, oh, I was about to ask if it was a documentary. It can't be. <laughs> I was like, wait, are no, you know, I don't do docs. I'm saving yeah, that for true. marriage. That's true. I recently started a show that I know I'm very late to the party on. I just started Dairy Girls today. <gasps> Holy shit. Yeah. I just want to, to everyone who has recommended it, I'm so sorry. You were absolutely right. I'm a dumb idiot bitch. It's about these like high school Irish girls. It is hilarious. You would love it because it is very much all accents all the time. I can't do that because There's a I'm... cute boy in it who goes to the all girls school because he's English. And if he goes to the Irish all boys school, they'll beat him up. So he has to go to the girls school. <laughs> That's funny. Isn't that cute? I can't That's watch cute. anything with dairy in it because I'm lactose intolerant. Okay, you got mm. you got to hold off on those jokes. We can't start off so strong. <laughs> <laughs> From Dairy Girls to Drag Race Girls, let's talk about season thirteen. There we go. Solid. Solid. There was that. Did you there like were, that one? There Solid. we go. Yes, that was very right? good. We are talking about disco, so we should get this out of the way. Because, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Chan, first of all, <laughs> we have very similar vibes going on. Yeah. You're yeah. the disco queen, and I decided to be the disco ball. We're both very shiny. I went for more of a floaty 70s vibe, very kind of resort. You I know went for it's like actual people clothes, like not not these costumes. You were like, I'm gonna be a yeah, woman. Someone would wear, yeah, yeah right. Well, I've been making, I've been, I've, I've been making new things this yeah. this past season, and I was like, I don't need to make something new every episode. I can wear something that I already had. You should make more stuff for me and Chan, though. That's why we're in these. Every episode. You think we want to wear these? We're waiting on you to make us something. Oh, okay. I'm a disco ball because of you, bitch. It's a children's costume made for an eight to 10 year old. <laughs> uh, it's really pretty. So the armholes are too small and it hurts. The sleeves are actually pants that I couldn't fit on my legs. Painful? Yes. But am I disco? Who's to say? Okay, at first glance, I just see you as like a round ball, but then it takes some time for me to go like, what is round and disco? The disco ball, so. Yeah, every gay bar has a disco ball hanging yeah. somewhere, and they are the dirtiest, dustiest things. They're supposed yeah. to bring light into the world, and instead it just looks like some old queen got left behind. Oh. Is that your me? story? <laughs> yeah, that is my story. I got, that's why I'm so dusty. Sorry, let me. <laughs> Get that up. Mm -hmm. Dusty, yeah. dusty ball. Yeah. Shout out Dusty to Dusty Balls. Ball. Well, let's get started in this episode because we will let's have go. a lot to talk yeah. about. Yeah, and we actually, we got recorded a podcast with the Ophelia Love mm -hmm. yeah. from uh, from the UK. So it was fun to talk to her about Drag Race. You were about to say where she's from, but you couldn't remember, right? No. That's the uh, afternoon tea with Fee. Yeah, we ended up talking really about Drag Race, this episode of Drag Race, for like two hours. So we have our thoughts. Well, I was about to say organized, We went through a first but, draft, so this yes. might be, it might be good, it might be horrible. Yeah. Mm. Don't put that in. I will. <laughs> so the episode starts with them coming down from a big fight between Tamisha and Candy. These mm. girls do not hold back. You know, queen v queen, you got someone from New York City who has been doing drag for some years, and then you have someone who is like a legacy in Atlanta, so you have like kind of a production dream. Drag Race producers yeah. were like, oh, we've we've hit the gold. We've hit what the, the viewers were asking for. Oh, yeah. you know the producers, the storyline producers were just all hiding under the tables, jerking off. This is gonna be so good. This is gonna get us an Emmy. Keep yelling, yeah. I loved Tamisha though. I said what I said. Mm -hmm. That's what you I heard. Said. That's not what I said. I right. said what I said. And then I love that Olivia, the nicest person in the world, was like, yeah, but like, you did say this. And then Candy's like, roll the tape. Roll the tape! And then the editor was like, okay. And they rolled the tape. 
Candy got most of it right, but there was some things that she was taking a little personally, but... Who wouldn't, though? You're in a Who pandemic wouldn't? and you're filming a show. Uh, emotions are constantly boiling at the surface. I agree. Right? Uh, emotions do constantly boil in pandemics. You know what? I'm sitting in a new seat. I'm feeling... Already, I'm already <laughs> feeling insecure. <laughs> Uh, don't be mean to me this time. I don't know where to look. You know yeah, what? I'm sorry. If you feel a certain way, Alexis, just snip the string that's holding her up to the ceiling. Just no, see no, that no. Ball drop. Ah! I don't want to fall. Happy New I'm Year's, bitch. Dusty. Boom. Have y'all ever been parasailing? Like when they do parachute, mm. but tied to a boat? It oh, looks no, I'd hard, rather live. but yeah, I don't a dream. I have never done it because the one time we tried, my sisters were up in it, and the guy he, clearly he did this every time, but he put he took out a big comedy pair of scissors. And he went like this on the line, like, ooh, I'm gonna cut you. And I thought mm -hmm. they were real. And I was so upset. And because I was upset, because I was a little scared to do it, I was probably like six or seven at the time. I, did, I decided I didn't want to do 17. it. And he gave me a piece of paper, a certificate that said chicken, because I chickened <gasps> out. Can you believe that? The, the abuse. That's creative <laughs> abuse, though. Yeah, to that's have a creative abuse. Ready. I'll give it that. Mm -hmm. that was the that was the early '90s. That's, oh, well, that's that was what just, people were that's like not back abuse, then. That's just early '90s. Tamisha, to me, it felt like Tamisha was very alone, and Candy still had a lot of people kind of fighting on her side. This fight has been going on now for what? three hours? How long are mm -hmm. they still filming? Candy was like, "I'm checking out," you know, like I'm done. And then she's got Tina and Gottmik <gasps> rolling their eyes for her. Tamisha was all by herself. I understood why Tamisha kept going. There were some, there were some flaws in Tamisha's arguments, but I got the emotion, mm -hmm. and yeah. it was setting up the rest of the episode. Oh, for sure. The kids get really bold, and they forget to remember that the emotion is coming more from their interaction with each other. They are in a pandemic. They have cameras in their face all the time. They're under a lot of yeah. pressure, so it's not just between you know Tamisha and Candy. This is a reaction to like all the stress that they're put through. And I'm sure that some things that you aren't seeing on TV are moments where they're just like, I cannot look at that camera right now. Please get that camera away from me because it's a lot. It's a lot to do and whatever they respectfully allow them to show on TV is what we get. So kids, take it easy on them. Oh take yeah, don't easy. send Relax. hate mail to anyone. Yeah. Well, there's a couple people. I do have a list. Uh, DM uh, me and I will, I will send you the list. You could filter them, yeah. <laughs> if you want to see Darby's hate list. No, uh, I'm just kidding. It's just my dad. Uh, Venmo IMHO the show. Oh yeah, Venmo IMHO the show. And then I will give you my dad's phone number. So Joey J's gone. They barely talk about it, which I understand because they've already filmed 37 episodes and this is only the second person to go home. They eliminated the only gay person on the show. So we no longer have that G in the LGBT on that show now. So now, now what? There's and no what? representation. There's, There's no, no representation. representation. Right. Who, who else are we going to, you know? I mean, I, I do. Ross? Oh, I don't know. Jerk off to well, Ross we're always rooting yeah. for. But <laughs> it's exciting to see heterosexuals finally get their foot in the door. They mm -hmm. often are kept out of so much. Yeah. Drag race and satisfying anal like they don't uh -oh. know i'm rooting for tamisha she's my favorite she's my, oh she actually does have kids sexuality is fluid yeah. sexuality is Enjoy yourself is a spectrum it's a spectrum and so is autism and it's spectrum mm -hmm. and rectum and and rectum well no your rectum should be one shape well Okay. The mini challenge they have to pair up for. Yeah. And RuPaul says, You better watch out because the person you pick now is like lobsters baiting for life. And mm. it's going to be mm. your partner for the rest of the season. All Stars won. No, it was really just for the main challenge. But yes, it was very dire. Hmm. And of course, Elliot with two T's was last picked. I'm oh, not going to yeah, say that yeah. Tamisha was last picked. I think mm -hmm. Tamisha was standing in solidarity with herself after that yes. fight. Everyone was afraid to pick her. Okay. Who did Elliot turn to? And they were like, oh, sorry, I already... Owned. Denali. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, oh, But yeah, so Elliot's mad, big mad, that she got picked last. But sweet mama Tamisha yeah. put her arms around Elliot, and she was like, just breathe. Just breathe. Yeah, just that was breathe. sweet. This doesn't matter. Being picked last on a reality TV show, it doesn't matter. I love seeing that. I don't know mm -hmm. that Elliot deserved, you know, such kindness, but... 
we'll get to that later. They do the wallpaper mini challenge, which <gasps> oh. sponsored by <gasps> Spoonflower. Now, Spoonflower is not just wallpaper. It is also custom fabric. So our beautiful background that was drawn by Austin Baird, we have uploaded that fabric to Spoonflower. I'll put the link in the description box. You can order our fabric. You can mm. order yards of this fabric and make things. Wait, I want to make, I still want to make us dresses. So go to spoonflower.com forward slash lowercase f number nine underscore six two a little a period I can think. Can I just search Comma. for MHO pattern background? Oh yeah you could do that too. Oh! Did anyone stick out to you in the mini challenge? I thought Got Mix was pretty cute with the bow and like I can't yeah. believe they made that look in the allotted time and also yeah. Got and Dragon did all that so I thought that was really cute. I guess there was the three of them. Tamisha and Elliot made a pretty big costume too within the time so. Oh yeah theirs that was, was pretty, pretty good. good. Theirs was mm -hmm. good. Well, and we have to keep in mind that this was shot at a time when Tiger King was very yes. relevant. So I get why they they won in that time period. Yeah, mm -hmm. Re references. Yeah, um, that feels like a million years ago. That was at the beginning of, of quarantine. Tiger King. Tiger it was King. Tiger King and Making the Cut, which I think I talk about every single time. <gasps> making the Cut. Making the Cut was feels so like it was amazing, four years but ago. it feels like it was. Yeah. Ugh. Did okay. you watch that? I wonder if some. I did not. No. Oh, you oh, love it. Cut. Yeah. Okay. So good. I'll put on it's the like list. Project Runway, but but good, like really good. Uh, oh, but good. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. how we feel. Okay. Naomi Campbell's a part of it, so you know. Uh, it be good. Oh, do you think that there's gonna be some Tiger King references for Snatch Game? Do you think someone's gonna do Tiger King because they did do that for? <gasps> oh. oh. That would be a shame. They find out that the main challenge is going to be the history of disco? A disco mentory. Disco mentory. Wow. Oh, that's funny. Documentary. Documentary disco. 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 Uh -huh, Rue loves uh -huh. a wordplay. Rue loves a wordplay. So this will be a, it's 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 a it's a Yes. What they're gonna do is they are going to dance. They have each have different parts of the history of disco. Right. RuPaul assigns the parts, which I don't like when they do that. I like I like a little like fighting over stuff. It's 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 fun. I said yeah. Ru can, yeah. she didn't listen. So we get to a very oh 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 okay. When RuPaul walks in initially, she is dressed like Charles Nelson Riley. Oh. Okay. A very specific match game oh, reference God. from the mid 70s. Match game. Yes. Okay. And it is something that I don't expect a lot of people to know. Chan, do you know who Charles Nelson Riley is? No. Alexis, do you know who Charles Nelson Riley is? <laughs> no. Rue was deeply offended by the fact that no one did. Now, I was surprised Tina Burner didn't because I think she's an old soul. Like, I think she, she looks old. So I was surprised that she didn't know. <laughs> no. I'm just kidding. Come on. I know. No, I'm just saying, I know who Charles Nelson Riley is. A lot of people my age know who that is. But Rue's response to them not knowing was two middle fingers. Yeah, she, that, the whole it vibe continued. for me this episode was like, y'all don't know about disco? What's wrong with you? Whereas it could have been, hey, probably a lot of you younger people don't know about disco. Let's learn together. Let's in a all fun do wait, wait, a line of Are code. gay people judgmental? Yeah. Did you know that? That's wait. me. But Joey no. J is gone. There are no gay people left. <sighs> Wait a minute. I th I'm suspicious now. Because if <laughs> you're judgmental, very suspicious. I, if you're judgmental and you wear a suit, with, with, if you wear a suit, <laughs> if you wear if you wear a suit in general, at all. basically that attitude continued on with the walk around. So they get yeah. their assignments, and then Rue's doing well, not the walk around, the walk to Rue. Because that's what it's turned the, into. The Rue. The, the Rue Walk. The Walk About. The Walk of Roots. The Walk of Roots. What's your favorite disco song? What's your favorite disco album? Tell me three top disco albums. Oh, like, yeah. I like God, Mick, when, she, when he was like, uh, I do have three, but I'm going to keep those to myself. <laughs> I thought that was funny. That was funny. funny. Notice Rue kind of grilled everyone except for Tamisha Iman, whom I'm assuming might know a little bit more than the rest of them. I'm sure mm -hmm. that was edited out because the producers were like, well, that's not funny. Do y'all remember when they went to the church of Mariah Carey? Oh, Lamb, Lamb of God. Lambs, yeah. Lambs, Lambs of God. Yeah. They, it's one of those things of like, well, yeah, she's in pop culture. I know Mariah Carey. I could do a skit mm -hmm. about Mariah Carey. And then you realize, oh, I don't know that much. You know, plus the cameras are on you. You don't have computers. When so I understand not knowing disco. 
when that I, well. When I was in the seventh grade, there was this girl named Taylor, and she was beautiful, and she wanted to sing a Mariah Carey song. It's a duet with her and this other guy, and it's very sexy. And we sang it, but back then you couldn't get like karaoke tracks. Right. So, so we just turned it. the volume down. Yeah. yeah. Oh. We had to go to Sam Goody for karaoke tracks. That's how I ended up singing Climb Every Mountain at eighth grade graduation, because Sam Goody had Sound of Music karaoke or like Ace of Bass. And I was like, well, I can't sing Ace of Bass at church. Isn't your signature karaoke song though, Tequila? Mm. <laughs> There's video evidence of this too. Well, I also could not do that in a church. I, I said, it was I was the, a very bold eighth grader. Can I please, tequila really shows my, my range. <laughs> and they were like, no, the blood of Christ is more of a wine. Now, if you had a song about wine. Well, they did start, they, they actually cut themselves and they were throwing blood on me. And I was like, all right, well, ben I'll get off you. later. It was just a, a long walk around of her abusing younger people for not knowing how she knows. <laughs> Yeah. Abuse. But Plus, then laughing really hard. And then laughing candy. really hard. Yeah. Miss Rue is on something this season. Like, she is high on life, I'm sure. She yeah. must have had some kind of spiritual practice that is just uplifting her spirit. Like, she's or excited. Ketamine. I don't know. Do you, well, yeah. yeah. Kind of, well, there are natural gases coming up into her bedroom when she sleeps. But maybe she's just already kind of signed off. She's like, well, I know that I'm not going to be doing this much longer. So, you don't know who Charles Nelson Riley is? Well, fuck you. Then we go to the choreo prep. We have a new choreographer. We've never seen this one before. Uh, cutie alert. So cute. What was his name? His name um, is now on the screen. He yes. was adorable and you said, what was it about him specifically? Oh, I just like that he was like firm but not like mean for the sake of like production. I feel like some helpers in the past have been like, Todrick. you suck. Say Todrick. it. Say it. Todrick Call. Say yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Todrick. Right. And it's like no, why that's not really that? how people are. Yeah, why know? would you go? Huh? Why he's, would you say Todd? He's Tadra? been going through so much. He can't be around his best friend Taylor Swift. There's a pandemic. And now you're making fun of him? Todd, if that's you're watching the house this. down. The house down. Sick <laughs> That song, like I was making fun of her. No, that that song is kind of sick, thing, though. I do yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she she uh, does have her moments. I do I do like her YouTube videos where it's just the four of her singing. Like, keep doing that. I like when the like guest choreographers are like real and not just like I'm gonna shit on you for storyline purposes. Yeah, this choreographer didn't shit once. He was constipated as fuck, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. Some queens are excelling. We're not surprised that Denali and Rose are killing it, especially yeah. Denali. I'm just gonna, I just need to say that Olivia and Simone are killing it. Some queens mm -hmm. aren't doing as great. I believe I raised this this question, this this issue last week. Got Mick? It's a clunky mover. And I don't just mean dancing, I just think in general, she's a clunky mm. mover. Got the Mick. cameras are, are doing their best to stay away from her during challenges. Would you say Got Mick got two left feet? I'd say Duh. Got Mick got arthritis. Duh. Utica needs to talk to Got Mick. Utica needs to help Got Mick because Utica is not a great mover either. However, she Oops, plays ever. into that. She's like, yeah. I'm gonna be quirky. I'm gonna play with this sheet. I'm gonna be weird with it. Like Chan, you're an incredible dancer. You would be amazing. Yeah. Alexis, you're an incredible dancer. Tap dancer, oh. you can be on skates. So nice. Hip hop, not great. Thank you. And then well, me, they'd be like, can you just walk to the end of the runway, Darby? I'd say, sure, no problem. And I would have to think of three different comedic routines to walk that 10 feet. But I would do it because I respect the art. You're a much better mover than you give yourself credit for. You 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 do give the walk though, and you do give the doll fantasy. So yeah, thank you. Yeah, but I'm if you had giving... to do a Mary J. Blige lip sync, I would be worried. I would be the hateration and holleration would be in that dancery. <laughs> it would happen. I will have you know that my shoulders, as I sang "No More Drama" in that high school oh. talent show, my shoulders, they moved. They went forward. They went back. They went forward. They went back. Then when the drama hit me, when I said no more, but it hit me anyway, they dropped. That's art. That's a storyteller. Wait, hold up. That's a storyteller. Then we find out Tamisha, due to her cancer treatment, oh has God. an ostomy bag. Yeah. She has a literal open wound. This mm -hmm. was insane. This was like, I'm trying to hula hoop as best as I can, but I don't want to tell these other people or these other contestants that I've, I've literally, she's still dealing with her recovery. Props to her. She doesn't That's really a mom, need though. to do that. That's a real mom, because you know your mom. No, Iman. That's Iman, Tamisha, Iman. 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 No, like, you know a dad would be like, I got a cough, I can't take you to soccer practice, you know, mm. and, and then he'd say, faggot. 
and then you'd be like, is it a cough? And then your mom would be like, ugh, I just stabbed myself in the leg. Get in the car, we're gonna be late. They do anything for anybody, and they Girl, don't- Girl, can we talk about the mans? If they have a little cough, they're the biggest baby in the world, but they, they pout and shout like they're the buffest thing in the world. You got a little cough? Ugh, I gotta say, huh? You're such a little baby. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's not forget that when we take all this off, we are all men, and we do cry. Uh, uh, and I do do that. Cough. Yeah, I do. I do do. <laughs> Tamisha, what a... Love it. We're on episode... Yes. What is this? 24? And mm -hmm. we've Six? never heard anything about it? Yeah. My mom has to have surgery where she's gonna have an ostomy bag, and she's really worried about it. And it's just part of the recovery process. It's not a permanent thing. I'm gonna send her this clip of Tamisha dancing with a hula hoop. And I'll be like, Mom, you two will be dancing with a hula You should send her a stone bag. You should stone one for her. How is she gonna clean the shit between the stones? So we head into the next day. We're in the workroom. We get a little Mean Girls moment. Candy Gottmik and Tina Burner have decided to call themselves the Mean Girls Click. Mm -hmm. They put hands in. Here, put hands in. And they say Mean Girls on three. We wouldn't be Mean Girls. We'd be IMH hoes mm. on three. One, two, three. I'm HO. I'm HO girls. So we just started a Discord <laughs> server on our Patreon. So if you join our Patreon, yeah. you can join the Discord and we've been chatting and it's been super duper fun. But they were trying to come up with like, what's their name? What do we call ourselves as fans of IMHO? And I think they did land on IMH hoes. That's funny. <gasps> That's cute. I like That's that. That's funny. I like I that. Love, I like mm -hmm. that. Where, where my hoes at? How do you feel about this clicky <laughs> thing? I feel like I'm really you hate clicks. on it. I think they're only I doing like the it. the movie click. That's a good movie. What? The movie clip? It's it's not it's not very nice, but I know they're going for maybe some kind of storyline, you know, the whole Alaska talk situation that happened. But mean girls, are they really that mean? Like they're just really loud, like they're not really mean girls, you know what I mean? But but it is okay, so like what Tamisha was saying at the beginning of the episode, they are in the quote unquote winners group. The people who have been sent home so far only from the losers group. So creating a click within that already kind of weird winners group thing, even if you're not being mean, if you're not saying, hey, fuck you, I'm gonna burn your house down. I don't know why I went there, that was, that was a strong mean. But even if you're not mean, just having that group in and of itself is kind of mean. Exclusionary. There yeah. was, it doesn't feel good. There was um, some girls. They need girls. to get hit by a school bus. There was a group of girls in my high school that were in the grade above me, but we were all in choir and theater together, and they called themselves the Six. And oh, I love that. And they would um, have like special girls nights without me, and I wasn't out <gasps> to them yet. It was me and my friend Joel, and we both kind of moved forward into being gay humans. Mm -hmm. But back then, I was like, no, you don't understand. Like, I'm not trying to fuck y'all. Just let me come and like braid hair and stuff. But they would not, they, they would not. That they say, no, we don't have time for a seven. And we definitely don't have time for a seven who looks like a three. <laughs> <gasps> oh. You got me, bitch. You, you're, no, you're oh. mean. You got yeah. that. <laughs> you're mean. You're mean. Okay, I guess I would be in that group too. Make wow. my room. We learned a new thing, by the way, with six. We learned from Ophelia. What's that phrase? Oh, you knocked him on me, the, you threw, threw me, me for a six. six. You knocked me. You knocked, knocked me for six. a six. What was it, Chan? You knocked me for a six. Is that what it no, was? no, no. Something about beans. Well, there's no. beans. There's give there's it beans. Put beans in your boots. Give it beans. Everyone, listen to that pot. We'll link it below. Put your beans in the boot. Kick the boot. Put you your beans kick in my the boot. boot. You throw me six, and that means Brexit. Brexit. <laughs> Tina Burner is really pushing this click and she's kind of like the president of it because whenever they like did hands in from Mean Girls, like I noticed like Gottmik was like rolling his eyes like I uh whatever. Yeah. Like, well he I said that on Twitter. Tina he was like, Can this? I get that eye roll as a gift, please? <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes. I think they were I think Gottmik was fine with the click, but annoyed at the Mean Girls. It's fine. Good for them. Good for I'm them. I'm glad Tina has I'm glad she's found her people. Mm -hmm. Okay, then we we hear from Olivia. We get to hear about her weight loss and yeah, her time in the band and her sweet supportive mother. Her piccolo. We get to hear about her, <gasps> her piccolo, her gay ass flute. She loves a tiny accessory. Yeah, she does. Tiny piccolo. Tiny, tiny purse. purse. Tiny. The tightest pussy. 
What was the other thing that we learned? Um, uh, this gorgeous story from Tamisha about this special person in her life, oh, yeah. Mrs. Kemp, who kind of nurtured her, who took her in and said, I don't care, you're not a girl, do cheerleading, do backflips, do all this stuff. The judges even say it later. RuPaul says, if you have a kid, put him in dance. Mm. I cannot tell you how, I, I'm not proud of this. I still shame my mom, because I remember passing by the billboard on the way to church that was like dance school and asking if I could take that dance mm. classes. And she wouldn't do it because she was too scared that all the other kids were gonna make fun of me. You really fucked yourself over, because I could be a world famous dancer. Well, I could be a are, world. You are. People in the world know that you're a good dancer. Mm -hmm. You are world famous. No, that's very kind. But I just mean like for real. But successful and paying like, no bills. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm ready for you to do that too. Well, I want you to pay mine. Tap all over the world. All over your Oh, yeah, tap. Girl. You can tap on tap any all over the world, girl. No, tap but just like having your. I mean, I think we all know growing up in the South and our parents were scared of us being gay. Yeah. Gay. Okay. Because, Same. yeah. I always say this too like, y'all should have let me play with Barbies because I wanted to play with Barbies because of the hair and now I could be like a hairdresser to the stars. Mm -hmm. I could be paying your bills, but you fucked up. Mm -hmm. Don't have kids. You're putting a lot. Don't have kids. But you're putting a lot of value on Barbie dolls and a child's dance class. Do you think that maybe you're overstating what could have been based on the failures you have had to overcome in your life and continue no. to feel weighed down by? Hmm. No. No, I think everything that I have done wrong is my parents' fault. Oh. Chan's taking care of you. Okay. You know what you I mean? Parent, you've got Chan. Oh, thank I'm thank right, you. auntie's right here. I hear Thank you. Thank you so much. Girl, no, I think nurture your kids' interests. Yes, and yeah. for those of you with shitty parents, we're, we're all queer here. Well, Joey's gay, but the rest of us, just know <laughs> you don't just get over that. Like, it's okay. That's true. I always beat myself up when I was like, I'm 30 whatever now, and I'd be in therapy, and I'm like, I'm 30 whatever, and I'm still upset about my parents. Well, yeah, that was like your growing, developing years, and you gotta deal with that bullshit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When I wanna say for the record, my parents turned out really amazing. Yeah, they did. Mm -hmm. That sucks. So I feel I. I mean, no hate. No hate to them. They're very amazing. But I thought they weren't going to be for twenty-seven years. And honestly, so they, and that affects. They shouldn't me. have been. Look, look what they put out in the world. Oh, oh yeah. Well, they know. <laughs> They're still paying for their mistakes. <laughs> they did come to Camp Juan Kiki, the season one finale when you won Camp Juan Kiki. Oh, they did. And that is so nice. That is that very nice. Yeah. Very long, and that's that was a terrible experience. It was very long. It was a terrible experience. You know, it's too long when you have time to get blasted drunk and sober up. If that's in yeah. the mm -hmm. same time frame. Yeah. Um, to reflect yeah. on your mistakes, right? Can I talk about one really quick triggering? Yeah, no, it's not too triggering, but I remember walking. This was to see my great grandmother at her nursing home. We were with the family. We did this visit like once a month. And I walked into this nursing home with my wrist a little limp, as the young little um, gay boys do. And I was just walking yeah. like this. And she looked at me just like, stop doing your hand like that. And I wish I had the language to say that these people are almost dead. And I'm trying to give them life, okay? <laughs> With this little gay wrist. So let me be, let your children right. limp their sorry wrist. About, sorry about the end sorry of your life. It. Happy to see you. <laughs> you I mean, it's have truly, a... I think they have their heart in the right place. I think they think that, well, whatever. Like they're protecting us. I think they us. think that they're protecting us by stopping us because they know other people will judge us for that. But it's the wrong. Well, it was love, the wrong move. Yeah, I love that you're defending Chan's very homophobic ghost great grandmother. Well, I just know that. I mean, wow. I'm I just, sorry, Chan. I'm sorry that you went through that. <laughs> that's how you be. Thank a you. Oh. And now I get to do this. Yeah, look at mm -hmm. it. Look at it. And you get money for it now. Let's take it to the runway, to the main challenge. But first and foremost, we had a runway walk by Miss RuPaul. Mm -hmm. It was like one big ruffle, but it was kind of like stick up oh, in the yeah. air. It was really pretty. That was cute. Yeah, yeah, it was super cute. I mean, mm -hmm. it was very like Ru classic Ru silhouette. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think mm -hmm. she was in blonde hair. It works for you. Keep working it. Or, yeah, I mean, she looked gorgeous. She's got a team that She's makes a great team. She's got a good team. team. Emmy Award winner. Then we go into the actual disco mentory. Disco mentory. This, yeah, yeah, yeah. What what did we think of the whole layout? What did we think of this as uh, as um, it was? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the education. I enjoyed the narration, the mixed media. I yeah. definitely learned some things. I didn't know much about disco sucks. I 
thought that it was really cool that they highlighted a moment yeah. where like conservatives tried to like burn disco and that there was Insane. a retaliation. It was it was really enlightening. And it was here me. in Chicago. Yeah, here that in was Chicago. the other thing. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a This American Life, I think, about it is where I first heard about it. Apparently it truly became a riot. Now I know white people riot. I'm sorry, I need to let you know. Mm -hmm. White people riot. They brought records to burn with them to this baseball stadium and it got so heated, like out of control because people were so angry at Donna Summer. Psh. Can you imagine rioting? Psh. Cause Donna Summer was bringing the heat. Then get out of the baseball hot, stadium. Hot, hot, hot. Stuff. Yeah. Did it kill disco? No. It just put a hole in the ground because they burned, there was a fire. I agree with you, Chan. I loved it. That's how Rue needs to educate people. She mm -hmm. doesn't need to talk to people directly because she'll flip them off. But if she does a voiceover, it's sweet. It's sweet. It's nice. I was like, what's going on here? Because when the, the song started and they weren't lip syncing, I was like, wait, what is this? Uh, yeah. And then, and what then the just cutting for be that? between the mixed media and the yeah. dancing and all the fancy camera work and lighting, I, I couldn't really, I, maybe I was drunk, but I couldn't <laughs> like focus on it. I was like, well, am I, if am I supposed to be watching the dancing, can I just watch the dancing? Like, just put the camera down and let me watch them. Mm. Yeah, if they're not lip syncing, if it truly is just a did they challenge. do the dance moves correctly, let us see the dance moves. Yeah, and mm. I realize that that is an old person gripe, but I'm an old person. Yeah. Well, you can tell that this episode was really exciting for RuPaul because Ru really loves mm -hmm. disco. Uh, yeah. And I don't know, I guess she wanted ooh, to ooh. turn it into an education moment because, you know, you love something so much you want to teach people about it. Yeah, exactly. I that's think... that's what I'm gonna. That's what I was gonna ask you. So you have your own TV show. Oh. You have huffed a lot of natural gas. You're over it. You're doing whatever you want now. You've yelled at a bunch of kids for not knowing things you like. You are designing a challenge around one subject where all the queens have to do something around it. What is that subject? Game of Thrones. I would what do would you... RPGs, like role player games. That'd be a lot Ooh. of fun. Like you could be oh. the wizard, you could be the swordsman, the healer, the mage, just kind of nerdy stuff. Like oh. if we did like a Dungeons and Dragons themed challenge, that would be really cute. That's drag. That's that, drag. I would love to see that. That is drag. drag. Yeah, I'd love you to You know see what, that. Chan? I think you would be a mage because you're amazing. <gasps> oh, Jay, stay with it. I thought you said RBG. Just a bunch of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> yeah, Ruth, hey, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Night of a Thousand Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Actually, That's a good runway. That'd be kind of cute, yeah. They're all just talking about yeah. abortion. What would um, yours be? Abortion. I do a Judy Garland. Oh, I know they already did it, yeah. but that was right up my alley. Unfortunately, it was done drag race style, so it wasn't great. But yeah, it, it'd have to be Judy Garland. Mm. Or like death. Yeah, or dead Ooh. people. Dead people in general. Every person that has <gasps> died. Yeah. Oh. Oh, murder she wrote. Cause you get <gasps> death, you get Angela Lansbury, you get 80s, 90s style. Murder she wrote, I changed ooh, my mind. Murder she wrote. Ooh. Okay, that's your, your drag, brief. that's your drag. When are you, when are you giving that tease? You know what I mean? Oh my God. Alexis, yeah. will you make me murder she wrote drag? Yes. And then I'll turn you into one of the dead bodies from the episode. Ah, I wish you would. <laughs> Sweet release. <laughs> The first group is the Birth of Disco, and that is our group of three. So it's Got Mick, Tina, and Candy. Can we talk about how stunningly gorgeous Tina looks? Can I be honest? Not to take away from Tina's looks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because remember earlier in the episode, she put on that big red wig, and it was actually big, and it was good. Yeah. It was your big. And I think Candy said, the rest of us are blonde. Here, take this blonde wig. I think that was Candy's wig. Oh, well, she should do that. But she looked beautiful. And the red and the yellow, it actually did look like flames to me this mm -hmm. time. And it looked good. Like, that's more of what I, that was like, okay, I like this. And she was hitting those moves. Oh, she's, she's a good so little good. dancer. I love, dancer. I love that the cameras were just cutting away from Gottmik. We'd see Gottmik's cute little yeah. expressions and then suddenly Gottmik was gone. They weren't ready to send Gottmik home this week. <laughs> they were like, let's just... Speaking of safe. tricky candor, camera work, uh, Fee mentioned this in the podcast, but I agree with her. I think that they were closing up on Candy. I don't think she was getting the moves right, but I think she just kind of has that look where like, where am I? And I think they were like showing those Zoning parts in on of that. her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I don't think she was wrong. I don't know. 
I couldn't see the whole thing because they were moving the camera around. I'm yeah. 80 years old. They were moving, but they they were moving as well as Tina's little fringes moved. I, I'm that sorry, I can't dress remember how was good she looked. Amazing. Stunning. Amazing. amazing. She looked good. She looked really good. Then we had Disco Set. Ooh, Miss Tamisha Amon and Miss Elliot with two T's. With their hula hoops. Hula hoop choreo. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. I agree with the judges that Tamisha kind of has that deer in the headlight look sometimes, but she looked great. Yeah. I thought she looked amazing. <gasps> oh, I loved her. Yeah, I loved her, the outfit she was wearing. And she's a great dancer. She's super duper mm -hmm. fun to watch. They loved Elliot. Again, I didn't see enough that I understood their critiques mm -hmm. or their praises. I, I had the thought. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I was just going to say, you can tell that she's a dancer. She danced pretty well in, yeah. this, in yeah. these challenges of Tamisha I don't think did. the... Yeah, I don't think the choreography showed off what she can do enough to say like, whoa, Elliot. I think the choreography was a little bit like hoops, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But I think that they could tell, you could tell she's a dancer just by looking at oh, her. Oh yeah. I think dancing with hula hoops would be very stressful because prop work, carrot top. Then we had disco fashion, Denali and Rosé. Mm -hmm. Two gorgeous dancers. Now this was impressive choreo. Yeah. They definitely got the, the toughest stuff mm -hmm. and they did it so beautifully. They looked gorgeous. Yeah. I was living for Rosé's look. I mm -hmm. thought Rosé looked, looked amazing. Yeah. yeah. She, that the body, looked, drop all that tool, bitch. I want to oh. see your body. You look great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You look great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that hair was super cute. She could move. She was beautiful. And Denali, of course, killed. We're biased. Let's take it to Denali. Let's, okay, let's, for those of you who are tired of us talking so positively about Denali, why are you still watching this, first of all? But let's take a Denali break. I need to break this down. Rosé and Denali both did the choreography very well. They're both clearly dancers. Mm -hmm. However, Denali, even just like in moments where they were both kind of like bent back, Denali brought her arms fully back and kind of, there was like a lyrical movement to her. Every movement was finished and it was beautiful. She's in it. She's a dancer. She is a pro professional she dances she, she skates she needs to be on tour that's what i'm saying like she she yeah. needs to be oh. like a boss girl or she needs to do some kind of live performance aspect because she would be that's such a clever price. that people would pay I'm money buying, to see her in person am, like those numbers would I'm be buying stunning oh honey yes i'm yes. buying that ticket i'm buying yeah. let's go I'm bu i want to see especially with like post room money and like boss or whatever Michael Peters money. I want to know what they would pull out for her because it would be that's amazing. An entertainer, what yeah. did, oh my God. And have so many ice skating rinks lowered from the ceiling. I'm down. <laughs> she's the spirit. She's the movement. She she's is disco. There she's you go. She is disco. She is disco, mama. Speaking of is disco. Is disco. I was almost there. Oh, okay. Do you want to take no, it back? Yes. She is disco. Speaking of disco, we move into Studio 54. <laughs> <laughs> Honey. It is Drew Barrymore, 10 years old, doing coke. It is Liza Minnelli <laughs> riding a horse. We have Utica and Olivia. Let's focus on Olivia first. Wow. Should we say, should we all say it at the same time? One, two, three. Olivia was uh, gorgeous. Olivia she was, was the a actual new, embodification like embodied disco. of disco. Like, this is what, that hair, like, moved. This is what they were looking for. It looked like classic moved, room. That, that hair was smile. bouncy. That Cheshire dress. Cat Boo. Cheshire, Cheshire cat. The teeth. Cheshire cat. How do you get teeth like that? And it's all natural, like no teeth. work done. How do you get teeth right? like that? There's no work done. Good I Lord. Said I, that. I couldn't take my eyes off of her, especially <laughs> when they got to the group dancing. All I could look at was Olivia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She was magic. She did what Rue was talking about, that when Rue did gyrating, I can't do it in a corset, but she is freedom. She is free love. She is, she was disco in that moment. Mm -hmm. She was amazing. Yeah, and Amazing. And yes, she and Utica no, was she did great. She did great. Everyone hated her look. I was a little like the hair gave me Elizabethan tease, but when she stopped moving, I liked it. I thought it worked for her quirky, quirky ass character. Yeah, I could see that crazy ass bitch in Studio Fifty Four. She just did three lines off at the top of Drew Barrymore's <laughs> tiny little baby head. She did her homework in the corner, and she's dancing, dancing, dancing. <laughs> She's, Where's she's this Drew Barrymore story? Wait. Drew Barrymore was like a bar hopping like teenager. She was like Lindsay Lohan before Lindsay Lohan was even born. She was she was like a drug addict at like twelve. If you gave That's why she's a bad talk show host now. No. Oh, dear. <laughs> if you gave ten year old me cocaine, I would jump off a building and mm -hmm. try to fly. I would be so excited. But when we give it to you now, 
I just fall asleep. Yeah. The final group to go was the Disco Sucks. It was Lala Ree and Simone. Both killed it. Oh, Lala, so Lala's, mm -hmm. Lala was up there. Was she in the top? Because she should have been if she wasn't. Well, no, her runway was not great. It was just, yeah. It was a little black dress. We'll talk about the runway in a second. Yeah. I thought her dancing was so good. She, You could tell this is where she shines. The performance was amazing. The look was cute. Her face, too. Can we talk about that just really quickly? That her face lately has been chef's mm -hmm. kiss gorgeous. She oh. is stunning. We said it on the, the podcast, but I think that she has like a sister, yeah, coming up to her and saying, hey, you should try this for like your foundation. You should set it with this. Like that's such a sister thing. Like when you're looking at someone and they're like, not that they're struggling or anything, but you're like, you know what? If you just pulled your eyes up a little bit like this, you would appreciate your features a little bit more. That's a really nice sister thing. Like I, I take yeah. makeup advice from like when the queens are like getting together, putting their faces on and uh, they're like, you should try this product. Like, I love that. I love yeah. that. Yeah, that's a really special thing about, Alexis, I miss that about dressing rooms. Huh? You should take some makeup wipes. Okay. Um, you'll figure it out. Can I shout out someone who's not a Drag Race girl that's... I haven't I have been able to recreate anything she's done, but I'm obsessed with her face. Yes. It's Crimson. Oh. Uh, yes, Crimson. I love Crimson. Yeah, I'm obsessed with her makeup. I don't understand it. I try to do it myself, and I have to start over. You have to take, take a makeup wipe figure it out. I'm gonna make a wipe you off the face of this planet. Okay. So Lala Ree killed it. Simone killed it too. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Lala Ree, very much like Olivia, couldn't take my eye off of her. Yeah, got really got a chance to shine. I loved watching yeah. Lala. So we just got discoed. So let's get our little black dress on. My favorite Cerberella song. <sighs> yeah. Can I be honest? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think this is a boring runway. Oh, I disagree. I think, you disagree? I think any boring, I think a simple runway, every uh -huh. look should have a twist to it. And I think yeah. that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think Little Black Dress presented that. Like, hey, here's what a Little Black Dress is. Now you're a drag queen, make art. Did all of them do that? No, Elliot was there, mm -hmm. but most of them Ooh. did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. I, I agree with Darbs on this one. Like, you get a plain category, but then it's up to you to be creative with it. Mm -hmm. you know? Okay. Like, put your drag, put yourself into it. I like it. the creativity. Okay, okay, okay. You've changed my mind. What would y'all do for this? Before Candy had done it, obviously, I, I love that Princess Diana black dress, her revenge dress I'm obsessed with. I would have worn the dress as is, but then I would have like, she had like a little side kind of drape. I would exaggerate it into a giant train, like a beaded train. Oh, yeah. And then she had the big pearl choker. So I'd have like the pearls kind of going up into the hair and create that into a headpiece. Cause anything you do like, yeah, you could do the reference and that'd be cool. But like, there's gotta be a little <coughs> to it. I would do, I would do, have you seen True Lies? No. True Lies mm -hmm. in the movie, Jamie Lee Curtis, she's going to Arnold Schwarzenegger. She's go well, she doesn't know who it is. She's going to meet a man, and she's supposed to look sexy, and she's wearing this very 80s, like, puffy. But before she Ooh. goes in, she rips off the puffy sleeves and the ruffle on the bottom and the collar. So she's truly just in a little black dress, boobies she's out. True lies and she it. takes the water out of the vase, and she, like, slicks her hair back. So I would do something like that. But it would definitely be, like, a transform on stage thing. Okay, I have mine. Okay. I would do a, like, a gothic Lolita look. A little Ooh. Japanese creepy. I'd be a little creepy with it. I'd have like a little doll. Yeah, <gasps> that's yeah, I think cute. That's what I would do. JB, something spooky. JB, she's looking her pussy. I'm so sorry. Kiki, Kiki, don't lick your pussy. Want to be on? You want to see her? Yeah. Does she want to? Does she Only want if she to? wants to. She has. I to heard her last here. week. I heard her last I know, time. She made her her reappearance on IMHO. Come here. Oh, she ran from me. Oh, okay. Well, she doesn't like it when I do this. She's camera shy. Let's get into the looks. The first one was Tina Burner. She came out in what was clearly going to be a reveal or the worst understanding of the assignment ever. So she came out as a painter, she ripped it away and boom, she had a black dress on and then she's back to yellow, red and orange. She had paint on her hands. So she grabbed her titties. I changed. Girl, what's the story? Yeah, like, tell the story. You know, like, let, let, let the dress tell the story. Her story is, I was painting, and then I got my hands dirty, so I did this. That's your story. Mm -hmm. This is your story. I changed my mind. I didn't like you it. You know what my little black dress would be? What? It would be what? a normal little black dress, but then you turn around and just come. <laughs> Remember when... <laughs> I, I don't know. Wait, wait I'm, 
from literally falling. Hold on, please. You're squishy though, let her fall on you. <laughs> Oh my god! I'm sliding up, I'm sorry. I'm that just is up. quite a surprise. I did not expect all that come. <laughs> Cut all that out. I'm sorry. Oh, I did not expect all that come. There's like cum stains up the back. Yeah, we've all been there. The worst part though was the wig. That was that was disrespectful. That was rude. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I expected yeah. a wig reveal. It was so bad, and it looked like it was just plopped on her head that I expected her to reveal to even a smaller wig, which would have upset me really. But I think not revealing <laughs> was upsetting. Anyway, sorry to interrupt your cum laugh. Um, <laughs> Remember when she was like, "I'm giving you cum." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Then we went into Candy. Candy Muse Ooh. was oh, the I Princess love. Diana dress painted on a canvas and then painted on an even smaller canvas. And then she was painted like, she spilled the paint, you know, like the yeah. musical paint. I liked mm -hmm. it. I thought it was really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love this too. And I thought yeah, it was, I thought a, it was cute a cute reference. little nod to, yeah, it was a Calm de Garçon design that Asha wore something similar on her first episode in season eight. And I saw a lot of Sweet. comments on the internet saying that it needed more, that it was too plain. But the simplicity of that, I think, was the the statement. Like, I, I think had it added more, had, I don't know what more they would have added, like a, a poop stain, like, oh, she farted. I don't know. I don't know why I took it there. Princess Diana never pooped. It's fine. It was fine. I liked it. I liked it simple. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was fine. She has a gift to be simple. She has a gift to be free. Then we had Got Mick, came out completely naked. Oh. Yeah. And then covered top up. Top tier. Yeah, top tier. That tiny little black dress. Yeah. This was amazing. This was a moment. And did you see the photo shoot that he released later this week with um, Gigi all the trans women? Yeah. That, Gigi yeah. Gorgeous, Sasha Colby, these legends that inspired us. I, I Iconic. Lived. Yeah, that was I really good. I lived and loved and laughed. The bejeweled nipples like everything just worked really well oh yeah yeah and it was a great statement too you oh. were talking about how mick mentioned like a year ago i would not have done this oh yeah yeah i'm so confident in my body like amazing that's that's iconic elliot with two t's i liked the coat because i love coats but this was she very simple was this realness. was very simple she yeah. loved giving yes. realness she was very into realness what was that? What was? What were those? What was so? What was? What was that wig? What were those roots? What was that wig? Dark roots. What was that wig? What was the roots? I, Why what was, was it, that wig? She combed. What was that wig? What was that, what was that root? I think she. What was that, that wig? What was that root? Do you know what that root was? Do you know what that wig was? That root. What was what that was wig? What was that wig? What was that wig? Oh. What was that wig? What was that root? That was a simple black dress. What was that with wig? With a very what offensive that? wig that I hated and a coat that was not even part of the assignment that did not even look like a twist. It was just something. That's not a dress. So, yes. <clears throat> now she I, gave you a black dress. Okay, a little black dress. Okay. okay. It was a little black dress. Yeah. Tamisha came out in a dress that she made, of course, because it's Tamisha. Yeah. It was that neoprene bow. She had kind of the Yeah, it was, a, it was a, it was an interesting design, but I think that what the judges said was right. What The way that it was manipulated, it made her look big in parts that she didn't want to look big in. We do judge Tamisha on a different scale because that is classic, beautiful drag. That is high end classic drag. So I thought she looked great. Was it up to snuff as far as like the drag race? runway she was on, maybe not, but beautiful. She looked great. I mean, yeah. she's beautiful, yeah. 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 Then we had Olivia Lux, the hair, the makeup, gorgeous. Stunning, stunning. stunning. The vibe, giving us the classic vibe. RuPaul a little bit. Yes, Tiny little the purse. black lip. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The dress was- S Superstar. It was beautiful, but it was a little black dress. It was another- That's the, that's what, that is the issue I have with this runway prompt. It's a little black dress. You're right, they should do something with it. It's still a little black dress. But I do think- she Like she looked, did the challenge. She looked great though. Like as opposed to yeah. what we saw from coming up next La La Rie, she did a little black dress with a really cool neck thing, but there was no, it didn't speak for itself. Whereas Olivia's look did, I guess. Like Olivia, that was a, a stunning look. Yeah. Lala Ree's look was fine. Her face stunning, the neck piece stunning, but the constantly having to pull down over her tit or over her I almost said her titty over her <laughs> But constantly having to pull down over her, her booty was really funny to me. 
Yes, yeah. we've all been there. We've all been the out really of the, short dress. the club. Yeah, with the short dress. Yes, that in, in that black dress that we have. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That same exact dress. Then we had Utica. Oh. So cool. She was her earrings. Have we ever seen that look before where someone used like an earring? No, I loved it. I love it. You can get inspiration in oh. any in any little place. Yeah. I loved it. I, I thought, thought it, it was so cool. so cool. It did need explanation, but even without the explanation, like again, what, what are you gonna do? The little black was. What they think the top of the hat was? Because I saw that look before I watched the episode. I saw a picture of it, and I immediately got it because I was like, "Oh, look at the top of her hat. That's an earring." I think it's because when it when you initially come out, the hat was tilted back, so you couldn't see oh, the hook. Yeah. It wasn't right away. I loved it, but I still loved it, and I love Utica. Then we had a classic black dress with a couple really cool reveals. Denali. <gasps> yeah. She looked stunning. Her makeup was stunning. And I was like, okay, all right, little black dress. Okay, you look good. She turns around, there's that beaded, gorgeous web. And I was like, oh, okay, okay, so you're a black widow, okay. And then boom, takes the hat off. She's got spider eyes on her forehead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about with a little twist. That's what Olivia and Lala Ree should have done. They should have pulled off their wigs and had spider eyes in their head. Why did she just did a shoot. She just did a shoot too with a real life tarantula, a oh, real, yeah. like a real spider. Okay. Miss Gretchen, yeah, a hired photography animal. You know what? Spider though? That's like, drag kills. Okay, that's how that's oh. how you do. you try <gasps> and do fashion, and then boom, mm -hmm. the tarantula. Can, tarantulas can't kill you. Right? Uh, tarantulas would bite you. No, they can't kill you. I don't think. But a tarantula would bite you. Yeah, I'm still not moving to Australia for that reason. <laughs> I have a friend that was on a season of Survivor, but she got she got eliminated first or second, and it was in Guatemala. And she said that she would wake up after she got eliminated in the tent, and she would see a spider as big as like a football basketball player's hand, oh. like just the shadow, like uh, in the tent above. No. And I asked her; she was scared, and she said no, because that's just like that's just like normalized. what life was. Yeah, mm -hmm. normalized spiders. Normalized. Spiders. Normalized spiders. Should I watch Survivor? <laughs> No. Oh. So then we had Rosé. She said, hey, you know how I've been wearing tulle on my shoulders? <laughs> I'm gonna keep that up. But this time I'm gonna go all the way around. Yeah. What did we think? She looked like a pillow, a throw pillow. It was actually a nod to some designer. Somebody posted it on Twitter. The designer's look, the tulle went a little further in. So it did look like a little black dress. Hers, I wish the tulle had come in a little more to, to do that. But ma'am, we got to But I did see tool. the shape. Yeah, she did oh. see the shape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the third time she's worn tulle on the runway. Yeah. That's a lot of tulle. I mean, that's a lot maybe, of tool. maybe what it is and is... And that style of tulle, like from the shoulder tulle. Ah, uh, see, that's what I said from the very beginning. What? This kind of like tulle in the shoulder, It's it makes her look wider and it makes her give her... This one gave her no neck. I love rosé. I love rosé. Me too. So I don't want to speak ill of the drag. But, okay, we've got it. Tool is great. What other tools... Yeah. Do you have in your box? Then we had finally Simone. She came out in that <gasps> 90s RuPaul Ooh. hair. And then we find out her little black dress is made from braids. Love. Made from fucking hair. I loved this. So brilliant. She always has a reference. Everything she comes out in has a reference. Yeah. And, and this 90s. was a nod to RuPaul, but it was also like. Ugh. It was a nod to RuPaul, but it was pretty. So if you're not a RuPaul fan, you could still like it. Yeah. That house of Avalon, they're really talented. Oh, All yeah. Them. Yeah. I, love them. I wonder if Gigi made that hair because she made the Simone hair. Maybe. Maybe. Or maybe help. I wonder where that house is. Can we come visit House of Avalon? Would you like a would you like a visit? Can we come visit? I don't think we could fit. No. Can I say something about Olivia's hair going back a little bit? Yeah. I found out on um today on TikTok that Madeline Hatter did that hair. Oh. <gasps> Now I see it. And now you do you sense. still now see I, it? Big hair. Because big, it was big hair. hair, but also it was kind of coming down in the front. Yeah, it was off to the side. Can it, that be a Patreon only? Because I don't needed... want to be mean to Madeline. Why? What does that mean? mean? It's great hair. signature. That's signature hair. It's a little floppy. It's not quite finished. It works. <laughs> uh -oh. It works. You're mean. Yeah. Um, so the winner this week is Olivia. Congratulations, Olivia. She's won a $5,000 cash tip. To 
No, just cash. cash. Oh, Visa gift card. <laughs> oh, sorry. I was like, to what? That performance deserved it. I, you know, I've said what I said about her runway, but that performance was killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stellar. Stand and she is killer. Beautiful. Stellar stand -up. She's beautiful. Then we get into our bottom two, which we kind of saw from the beginning because episode started with them fighting. Tamisha and Candy. Tamisha and Candy. The song, it was Disco Week, so the song they picked was <laughs> Blue Cantrell's Hit Em Up Style. Yeah. Classic disco song. Here's my thing. I think they switched it. There probably was a disco song as part of the list of lip sync songs they had to mm. learn. That they probably were going to have be part of that lip sync. And then they realized Tamisha would have slayed that. I don't know. I, I just feel like... They wanted to keep Candy and they needed to keep Candy. Yeah, I think the whole, I think that Tamisha V. Candy was like, I wonder why. But but the performances, Candy and Tamisha both killed it though, right? It was weird to me that they didn't lip sync to a disco song. I was expecting like a really cute disco moment and Tamisha probably would have eaten it even harder. But both yeah. of them performed really well. The producers love Candy, so, mm -hmm. and Candy is giving them the TV that they need for that Emmy, so they will be working around Miss Candy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Tamisha delivered, I, they all said it on, on the show, but Tamisha delivered a very classic, like, that is a classic drag queen performance. That is, that is a seasoned pro. And yeah. then Candy was more of the, like, newer Emotion. emotional. Yeah. Tamisha goes home, but just like Tamisha did in the first episode when she thought she was eliminated, she went home with the biggest smile on her face. Candy is bawling. Yeah. And apologizing to her. And Tamisha's like, stop, it's fine. Okay, well, I'm, I'm happy for the opportunity. It's not over. Thank you so much. Yeah, she said, I'm gonna go home and start getting ready for All Stars. She should. Bring her back. Bring her back. Bring her back. So that was the end of the episode and unfortunately the end of the Tamisha Amon TV dynasty Aww. for now. For now. No, it's for not now. the end. It's not goodbye. It's just, I'll see you later. It's just, a, oh yeah, that's what she said. I'll see you it's later. A we put a uh, putting a pause. Speaking of, we have a very special guest that we have some questions that we are going to ask them. Speaking of what? A pause? Yes, and I'll tell you how I got there. Okay. Pause. Put your paws up. Okay, are you with me now? Yeah, it's Lady Gaga. <laughs> yeah, we have Lady Gaga. Oh my god! She got us all some chromatic Oreos. Oh, that's wonderful. No, no, no. Today, Curtis goes, did you know Lady Gaga has, does she have Oreos? <laughs> I was like, yes, faggot. Like, get on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> come like, on. No, I what kind of gay are you, Curtis? Right? It's like, come on, it's February. So we are talking to one of my favorite people in Chicago, my good sister, Miss Degrassi Noel. Degrassi, hi, how are you? Hi, I'm doing all right, as right as one can be doing during a, a, a Panda Express. <laughs> now, Degrassi, we just had your mom, Lucy Stuhl, on, and she was telling us a little bit more about the Black Valentine Cabaret. Tell us about your involvement in the cabaret. We're so excited to see you. I'm really excited about the upcoming Chicago Black Drag uh, Council's Black Cabaret. There's going to be shows of all different genres happening all weekend, uh, being hosted by a variety of amazing performers and artists and musicians. I will be hosting a cosplay show with my sister, Jo Mama, and it's gonna be super exciting to bring all these new black cosplayers to the forefront. Some of them experienced, some of them newer on the scene, but it's like, it's gonna be so much fun to like show off an element of drag cosplay that doesn't get shown a lot. It's called Why I Gotta Be Black Lightning. I came up with the title. <laughs> Hey Degrassi, I miss grabbing a little shot with you over at Berlin. I hope we can do that again very soon. Uh, but I've been seeing that you have been involved in live drag. How's that been for you? When uh, the pandemic started, I was kind of at a really uh, weird dead end with my drag, just sort of like not sure where I wanted to take it, not sure I wanted to where I wanted to evolve it. And then like in this new digital market, you're meeting all these amazing new performers, you're meeting all this these amazing new viewers who can get exposed to your drag no matter where in the country, no matter where in the world you are. It has changed how I view performance. It's changed how I've evolved my drag character, how I've evolved myself as a person. It's been life-changing. Uh, it's given me new life in my drag. I have, I have the same thoughts. Those thoughts, my thoughts. We're the same. You're both thoughts. Uh, we, yeah, we are thoughts and prayers. Mm -hmm. And prayers <laughs> <more> thoughts. <laughs> 
Now, where can people find you? We want to make sure that people are able to follow you and we, I need to see more. I need to see more yeah. Degrassi. Yeah. You can find me at Twitter at Degrassi underscore Noel. You can find me on Instagram at Degrassi Noel. I'm so close to 3K. I hope like, so please follow me. Uh, <laughs> you can find me on Twitch, um, twitch.tv slash the Degrassi Knoll. Uh, I've been on a bit of a Twitch break, but we're gonna have a lot of new content coming up soon in the month of, in like towards the end of February, beginning of March. Wow, I love you guys. Thank you so much for this opportunity. You guys are amazing. Uh, 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 uh. Wow, I hope you guys are doing well. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> All right, thank you so much. Be sure to catch Degrassi and a host of many other amazing performers in the Chicago Black Drag Council presents the Chicago Black Valentine's Cabaret. Not the Chicago, just the Black Valentine Cabaret. The the Black Valentine Cabaret. Good. Featuring Chicago and um and, and many, many other people. And other cities, yeah. Yes. So the GoFundMe for that is in the description box. So make sure you yeah. are dropping some money into that. And if you do have some money left over and you would like to donate to us so that we can transform ourselves into more balls, you can give to our Venmo at IMHO the show, our Cash App, which is cash symbol IMHO the show. If you liked our videos, uh, we are all, wait, excuse me, let me think, what do I use to say? <laughs> you liked it too much. Oh. If you liked it so much, we're all on social medias, Instagrams and Twitters. Uh, please give us a follow. So if you like what you see and you want to see more, join us over on Patreon. We're all having fun. IMHO the show. And we'll see you next week for more television via internet. Hey ladies, hey, if you really want to get Buck wild. Bye. Just go back and hit him up style. <laughs> okay, <sorry. Thank> you. Time.